Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. So today we've got the second of what we're calling the Trinity series for collaboration, which is a collaboration between my channel, Rena from Gold Key Guidance and Ember from Ember Moon Tarot, where we're looking at three lots of threes, so to speak, in the sort of spiritual or energetic area. And you may have seen the first of our collaborations, which was looking at the three fates, Clotho, Lachesis and Atropos. So the three fates from Greek mythology and, and how those energies might be operating in your life. This time around, we're tackling the mother, the maiden and the crone. And I have the crone to look at. And the others will be done. Uh, mother is being done by Ember and the maiden by Rena. So the connections or the, the, the links to their readings are in the description box below as always. What I wanted to focus on, I think, with the crone, when I think about the crone, I think about wisdom. I do think about release and endings in the sense of mother, maiden, crone as a sort of life cycle. But I think the crone can bring wisdom and reflection at any stage of life. And to connect it a bit more potentially with what my fellow readers are doing in this collaboration, I felt that, that what we'll look at here is what you are meant to release now, what the crone would help you release, what you are meant to consolidate and what you are meant to transform. So to help with choosing the right reading to get the right message from the crone, and by all means go to more than one if you feel drawn to more than one. I've put down the, the numbers as I always do. But I also, part of the reading will be these cards. So I basically shuffled and then asked Spirit to show me the first three major arcana cards from the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. And it's interesting because one of the things about the Dreams of Gaia Tarot is it has additional major arcana cards. And the first three that came up were literally some of the additional ones, which I think in itself is interesting. So this, this it sort of fits with to me with the sense that you've gone through the major arcana of the fool's journey from the fool through to the world. And that then what the crone is talking about is the consolidation, release, transformation, as I say, these additional sort of energies. Even though the way that the dreams of God do the tarot, they may come at various stages of that journey. I feel that's very interesting that that's what's come up. So there will be a flavor of these particular energies plus there will be three goddesses or archetypes as I say to have a look at the aspects we're, that we're exploring here then tarot for the wisdom and other oracle cards to to really give more context and, and layers to what the crone wants to say to you so for reading number one we have destiny for reading number two we have faith and for reading number three, we have perception. So three very interesting areas of life for the crone to talk to you about. So when you know what reading or readings you would like to go to, as always, the timestamps are in the description box below, and I'll see you there. Welcome, part one, to your reading. So you came to the reading that has destiny as a core card, and that is... It pretty much means what you would think it would mean with destiny there. It is, there is probably a suspicion of destiny you have or a feeling that you have that you've been called to something destined. Therefore, it's very interesting, the archetypes and goddess energy that the crone has drawn in to help express her message and her wisdom to you. Because we have the goddess Bast, which is a Egyptian goddess, which is normally about play and fun and enjoyment, but has some very specific advice in this particular deck, which I'll get to. Then we have the maiden. So this is, for me, the release energy. This is the consolidate and this is the transform. With the maiden, this, this very much points to important to go and look at Rena's reading to see how this aligns to this because obviously the maiden is also wanting to talk in regard to your destiny, to what you're drawing in, to what your fate or life path is. So there's, there's something very specific coming up and I think this is all about preparation for it. And the transformation of the badass is a really interesting energy as well, particularly when we look at Bast and the badass. So I feel looking at this with the destiny, as I say, something is coming into your life. And it will be interesting to see with the tarot a little bit more about what the various goddesses want to say and then how the crone consolidates this wisdom and message to you. But... I feel this is all in preparation, and I think that if you come to the right reading, you'll have that. You'll have the suspicion of destiny. You'll know that something key is coming up. Now, this could be in your career. It could be a destined love. It could be a step in your ascension path. Whatever it might be, you have a sense of it, and it's making you consider 
how you re relate to other people, I think, primarily, and what role you want to take going forward. Because as I say, this is very interesting. Bast in this deck, as I say, Bast generally is about play, enjoyment, you know, all of those sorts of things. Very strong connection to cats, so the sort of sense of flexibility and, and so forth. But this one also talks about Bast coming in when you need to have a think about your boundaries with people. If you've had a very lighthearted or play playful way of dealing with things, or even a kind of with the badass over here, a sort of sense of I am who I am and I like really eclectic, interesting, different people and I like to make a bit of shock and awe. If all of that's going on, Bast is inviting you to have a think about whether or not, and this is what you need to release, there is there are any people or situations around you that you need to release to move into your destiny. So this could be people who rely on you a lot but who are not necessarily reciprocating. It could also be a kind of grow up energy, and I don't mean this to say that you're immature, but it's almost like graduating. It, it has a sort of feeling around it where you say in an organization where you might have been an incredibly creative, brilliant person around lots of people and you're having fun with that, but you're ready to sort of graduate into being a leader, into a, being a manager, for instance. And so you've got to kind of transform a little bit of the individual into whatever the, the system is that you're in. Or it could be that you've drawn a lot of people to you because you're very vibrant, charismatic, you know, very, I could literally give no expletive deleted sort of energy that's drawn people in and you're a lot of fun, but there's something you've got to seriously get onto doing. And you know, in consolidating that you've just started this journey. And so it, it also has a sort of feeling of someone who is very, very social and who, say for argument's sake, you're at a point where you're about to, to do, you know, a major sort of academic thing you know you're about to write your thesis or something for a phd and you've kind of because you're naturally brilliant and get on great with people you've, you've done really well with minimum effort and maximum effect at university this is just another example of this sort of energy and now you know you're actually going to start on something that's taking you to something a bit more serious and it's like it's this sort of energy it's like how do you want to present yourself to others how do you want to deal with others how do you make sure that the right people are on the journey with you that they won't take advantage of you um, and equally that they're not scared of you because there might be an essence here too where where there might be other people who would join with you and everything but they're a little bit in awe of you so it's a really interesting energy because you're not wrong that you're moving into something but it just feels like it requires a different approach so and i think the crone wants you to sort of look at it from that perspective of the very, not necessarily the most mature thing where everything's deadly serious, but you need to sort of understand how to incorporate this sort of vivacious, creative, really strong sort of like personality sort of energy into whatever it is that you're meant to be doing in the world. So we're going to use tarot and we're going to get three cards from each of the goddesses to talk a little bit about their thing. So to, for Bas to talk a little bit more about what what she thinks in combination with the crone that you should be releasing. The maiden to talk about what she and the crone feel that you should be consolidating. And then the badass and the crone can talk about what needs to be transformed. So firstly for Bas, what, what does need to be released to allow you to step into your destiny, pile one? This card wanted to come out, so three of swords, okay. Death. mystery oh my goodness okay i'm going to put out each and then we'll talk about them together then for the maiden what does the maiden want you to consolidate queen of swords reversed three of cups reversed ten of cups reversed okay and then what does the badass need you to transform I really like when the badass comes up. I love the energy of people when the badass comes up. So I'm very predisposed to you at this point in time, Pile 1, I have to say. Uh, we have Five of Swords. Okay, so there's a lot about thinking in this. Three of Pentacles reversed. The world. Okay, all right. So looking at, firstly, what needs to be released, and I'll push this back up again when I get to that. There's some pain. You may well have been... 
overcompensating. You know, Bass might be gently saying to you that you've been spending a bit of time lately kind of almost overcompensating for pain, disappointments, and and because you know there's a choice, you need to go to a choice to go into something where you're not as sure. It's almost as though that sort of energy of enjoyment, it was sort of like you, you stay in that energy because, one, it, you can avoid thinking about something that might have been painful or disappointing. But secondly it sort of like delays, it procrastinates a bit. There's a little bit of a procrastination energy here, I think, that you need to let go of so you can make the decision and step into the mystery. The mystery is your destiny. You know, this is this is something that's meant to come through, but you may be blocking it a bit, maybe also because you almost have a preemptive sense that there is pain associated with this. So again, as an example, if you were you were someone who'd done extremely well at university and undergraduate and you're kind of like coasting and you were just doing really well and now you're stepping into something much more. You know you want to get to the mystery, but it's sort of like if you kind of procrastinate a bit, you don't have to deal with the sort of anxiety because it's interesting that every single one of these, the first card that's come out is a swords card. So there's something here in how you think about things that will help you better release what you need to do. And I think it's releasing the pain, releasing this almost preemptive disappointment. It's really interesting. I don't think that most people who know you would understand this was going on or would have any idea. They see you as like the badass. They see you like the person who just enjoys life. You know, you, you have a very vivacious, very charismatic energy. But underneath, you are deep. And it's like, it's like, it's like a very perfect, beautiful mask you wear. Not that you're being duplicitous, but what it's going to do, and I think why it needs to be released, is that if you don't sort of step up into this next level and if you don't sort of like kind of shift how you come across, people will not understand the shift. It's like you get serious. Again, if you were to, to move up the ladder at work and you went from being in the team and getting on extremely well with people and suddenly you're the manager, there's, there's always a bit of a shift that's difficult. And if you don't own that shift and you don't take it on, really take it on, make the decision about the separation from what used to be the kind of more fun lifestyle or the more collegiate and collaborative to something where you lead, you won't get to the mystery and with the bass thing, people may like either take advantage of you or they may push back because they're thinking like, what's going on? You know, like you've changed. So you have to kind of own this. You need to release the sense that things can stay the same that they are, I think, Bast is saying. Then you can consolidate. Now, the Queen of Swords reversed, Three of Cups reversed, and Ten of Cups. This does, it does feel pole one, I have to say, and I think these readings are going to be like this because I think the crone really, you know, she does a bit of the tough love. I do feel that this is saying that there's something that's very dear to you, which I think is connected to your destiny, that you have avoided a bit for some reason. Uh, maybe you haven't felt up to it yet. And it's interesting in the consolidation that we get the maiden, so the youngest in this particular triptych that we're looking at. So you may feel that you're not quite ready for it. You are. You are ready for it. You're about to step into your destiny. But you need to sort of start to understand how powerful your mind is because it's like it's. But you're very mercurial. This is why I say you could kind of wear masks when you need to, but you tend to turn that that mind on yourself sometimes particularly if you think that you're going to be disappointed. There's something in this where you think you're going to be disappointed. You're moving into your destiny, but you're almost sort of assuming it's not going to work before it even starts. And so the maiden wants you and the crone is saying you need to consolidate this intellect and turn that energy around because you could actually achieve what you want. But it's not going to be, again, in the kind of just having fun with people energy. It's more about what would you want long term and you haven't really sorted that out yet with the Ten of Cups. This journey is about emotional fulfillment, emotional stability. It may play out in work, it could play out in academia, it could play out in a relationship. But whatever it is, you've kind of been having a good time to avoid looking really at what it is that you want emotionally and what you what you know your destiny is calling. So the maiden wants you to sort of get off your own back intellectually, make that work for you rather than against you. And the badass, of course, because this is an energy that, in a sense, you are manifesting. That's why there's a transformational thing. This is saying you can keep it. You just need to sort of like dial it back a bit with the Five of Swords. So it's not like you cease to be this, this wonderful, vibrant personality. That's really good. because And you don't let it go completely because you, this is really still about you. And it's about you more on your own with Three of Pentacles reverse. It's not about collaboration. So you need to keep some of that badass energy because you're, you're stepping into your destiny. But there's a completion to certain... 
certain parts of your kind of like who you've worked with before, who you've been around before or whatever, it, it, it over and over feels like graduation of some sort, moving up the ladder career-wise, graduation at, at university or leaving a social group or a, or a community group or a political group or something like that because you're stepping more towards what you are truly and and you can keep quite a bit of that badass. You, but what you have to transform is the sense that you are one of a group because you're more one of a kind. And that has, yeah, that has its own issues to deal with because sometimes you don't feel ready. But remember that the inner badass is there. She just needs to transform a bit so that you complete the connections to people that are going to not move forward with you. It's definitely a sort of sense here of just being aware of the relationships around you, as I say, as you move forward. So let's ask the crone, therefore, to bring this advice together. What is the message she's trying to bring you using these three energies to kind of show you the sort of aspects in your life? Five of Pentacles reversed. Queen of Cups. The Magician reversed. Knowledge. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. All right. So... She firstly wants to say, you are enough in yourself. So if some of this sort of like, you know, almost alternating the fun loving and the badass sort of energy was a way of trying to cover up for you feeling, am I up to this? She wants to say you are, and emotionally you very much are, but you've protected yourself so much emotionally. And you've had a sort of issue about, do I want to be alone? So this is, this is one of the things is this sort of you're very charismatic. You draw people to you. And that's why you're going to have to be careful about this because some of this road you have to go alone. It, it, and not literally like kind of you can't talk to anybody, but it's there's there's a sense of uh, you are sometimes emotionally driven by not wanting to be alone and you make compromises. And this is what Bast wants you to have a look at to do that because you're stepping into another level. Part of your destiny is about knowledge and about information and whether it's used correctly. With the magician reversed and knowledge there, the crime wants you to know that you have an incredible intellect and probably an incredible spiritual knowledge. Very, very well developed. But you could use it for good or ill. You really could. And some of that will depend upon how much you are wanting to be emotionally authentic and happy to stand in your own because it's almost as though the energy that this is talking about is as you step into your destiny you are going to have people around you people that you need to move away from because they can't follow you on this path and then new people on the path and some of them will be honorable and some of them won't and and you could use it either way so if you are too too tied to the enjoyment of this kind of combination of bust and the badass and like you know having that kind of everybody's sort of like kind of in awe of you sort of thing. And if that's too much of a mask against what you're trying to do, it could make you open to the manipulation of that, to be seduced in a way. I think the people in this pack, you you are likely in, in the next, I don't know, six months or year at the most, to potentially almost have an invitation to, you know, something like the Keys of the Kingdom, the Elite, or something that is very, very valued, either emotionally or professionally or something. And, and there is a lot of, a lot of reason to do this because you're following your destiny, but you do have to be aware this is all about becoming far more clear in your own, your own self because the, the sed seduction issues are definitely there. So let's ask her for three cards for how all this energy can best help you. Because this is a tricky one. This is the the keys of the kingdom and and you know do you do you move into your destiny you know and and do something wonderful or do you incrementally sell your soul sort of energy like and i'm, I'm not meaning that literally but but just to sort of give the sort of sense of what's at stake sort of here so what's her, her three pieces of advice page of wands reversed five of cups king of wands reversed okay so she's saying for a start, you need to know what matters to your ego and to be really clear about it, because that could be the way in, you know, if you if you weren't clear about that. And you may, to some degree, need to dial down some of the charisma occasionally. So that that's sort of something to look at and really think through. Where is it working for you? And it doesn't take you off 
off path and it keeps you emotionally authentic and it doesn't make you potentially prey to those that might manipulate work that out pages to me are always work it out and when they're reversed it's like you haven't started to work that out yet so this is why this is coming up five of cups is that there may be some disappointments in doing this that's part and parcel of that that's why you have to know that's why you have to know when something goes a bit slower than you want or or you know there are any blocks that that you're not going to be more susceptible to the energy of a king of wands reverse it's very interesting the magician reverse knowledge and the, the king of wands there's definitely going to be people out to beguile you now. I think most of the people you've been with before just really love your company and your fun and all of those sort of things, but you're moving into the big leagues, pile one, on one level or another, and you have to be aware of this stuff. And that protects your heart rather than... But but where you could be disappointed and where it could, could sort of tweak your ego, that's where you could be susceptible. That's why you have to be very, very clear about this stuff. I mean, we all have an ego and we need an ego. Um, to to move forward it's not it's not that it's bad but it's understanding where that could be used by those who like to manipulate i think that's what the crone wants you to be aware of okay so that leads quite nicely really because it's a bit of a sort of a heavy energy into the next part of this where i just wanted to use a couple of decks to look at shadows and light energy that you may need to be aware of it seems to me the crone you know is the wintry sort of one of the, the the three the one that might have the shadows and take you to the underworld and so forth so we're just going to look for some other information from the crone about any shadows that you need to be aware of apart from sort of manipulative powerful people sacrifice okay i think this is saying you might be you might know actually I think that, that for most of you that have come here, if you if you have come to the right reading, you kind of know what it is. You know what it is you might be giving up in terms of like the fun and carefree to go into the more serious and the more powerful. You know that that there there could be, you know, sort of like really, really kind of apocryphal sort of choices that you have to make. You know, and you know you don't want to sacrifice. sacrifice. It's not meant to be about sacrifice, but this is why you've got these sword cards, this preemptive uh pessimism almost and and the crone doesn't want you to be pessimistic she's saying you don't have to sacrifice but this could be this could be something that takes you off your path if you start to go down this path towards what is your destiny and you start to come across these people you may think i have to i i'm not made for this i have to sacrifice that's not right so letting go would be would be kind of letting them win in a different way so it's important to be aware of that okay and then another shadow energy that could be worth being aware of. I am Carly from Death Comes Rebirth. You're powerful. This is happening because you're powerful. I mean, that makes sense to me, really, because the badass to me is a very strong archetype. You are not weak. You are able to deal with this. But but it's, you know, it's almost as though you can see the shadow so strongly that it's what's making you worried about it. And it's almost like you could hobble yourself. That same destructive energy, you could turn on yourself. So for Carly, you need to be about the rebirth. You need to be about the transformation, letting go of those things and people that are not going to be able to go this path with you and feeling strong within yourself, knowing that you have that energy and that you can go through anything. Because if people are trying to seduce you to say, follow them and you'll get the glittering prizes or or get into your sort of head about, you know, with the Queen of Swords reverse there and, and, you know, turn your own self-critique on yourself, you need to remember you have this energy. You don't need to sacrifice to do this. Okay. Wow. Really interesting what's happening with you guys. So I also wanted to get from the crone a sense of soul energy around this for you and so there's three different decks i'm just going to take a card from each just to get some soul energy that connects to this destiny that you're you're now coming towards winds of change the wind chime so this says when you hear the chimes the wind has changed a new direction awaits yes it does you can't keep doing what you've been doing it might feel nice and fun to sort of be in the life of you know like minimum effort maximum effect and you're very good at it but you're actually meant for more and that time is coming in and i think you know it i think you can feel it and you just have to know that you are capable of this you definitely are let's see the alchemy energy around your soul that the crone wants to highlight wow the great work 
not so. The great work is the, the work of the alchemist. The great work of the alchemist is to, you know, the spiritual development, the spiritual purification in, in a very real and literal sense when we do the great work completely in our lives or our souls. And that probably, it, it's a bit similar to sort of like stepping off the karmic cycle. You know, it's, it's coming, becoming the great magician. This energy is about uh, bringing together bringing something to a conclusion and transforming something in such a way that it becomes more pure and what it is. So this is you stepping into your destiny again. You know, it's very powerful magically. You, like you're very powerful magically, but you're going to draw other people like that who are maybe not on the light path, I've got to say, whether it's literal or whether that they're just, you know, because you can have people who are literally dark magicians. On top of that, you can have people who aren't in the spiritual world at all, but they, you know, run big corporations or financial institutions or whatever it might be. And I'm not, I'm not putting shade on all people who do that, but there are there are people in those sort of environments that people call corporate psychopaths and so forth. And in their own way, they're very powerful, very clever. It's like they do dark magic, but without the sort of ritual and the knowledge. So the, you're going to, in some way, come across that. You do have the knowledge and the strength to deal with it. You are an alchemist too. You are a magician too in your own way. But it's going to be there. So let's see the archetype also. That's important here. The mystic. Oh, yeah, you're the alchemist and the mystic. And this particular archetype, the way that they talk about it, is very fitting for this actually because there's various types of mystic you know there are there are the mystic that are trying to connect to the divine and and see it as the beloved and that kind of spiritual path and it's a it's a path of sort of renunciation and and sort of like almost stepping away from the 3d but this talks about the power of the mystic to transform so this this sort of badass energy and to and to be able to sit comfortably in the darkness and the difficult energy and transform it you know transform it like taking venom and, and transmuting it in the body. So there's something, there's something for you around that. And it's like, do you know what it makes me think of? And this is just a literary illusion. So, you know, this may or may not make sense, but there's a novel called The Scarlet Pimpernel. And it's sort of around the French Revolution and from memory, and I, it's a long time since I read it, the, the Scarlet Pimpernel was this person who's this English... Uh, fop, you know, he's like a, he's a, a sort of like an aristocrat or whatever. And he just appears to everybody to just be like this, this fun loving person, you know, who's all about outrageous things and fun, you know, and he's at all the social gatherings or whatever. But in reality, underneath, he's actually the Scarlet Pimpernel who is getting, saving people in France from some of what was going on in the French Revolution. So he's sort of, he has this completely undercover power. <laughs> That's kind of what this feels like. It feels like you, you could take some of this energy in and like kind of appear to be one way so that people almost don't see you coming. There's something also very Sun Tzu, Art of War about this as well. Very interesting, very interesting. You, there's something in whatever area this is in your life, you know, you are, you are more comfortable in being able to be in the darkness and to, to find your way through it than others. And, and you have a purpose, but it's time to get real. <laughs> one. It's time to get real. Okay, so let's see what sort of stars can guide you. Let's see astrology and numerology. Eight. Yeah, that's hard work. You, you, you're naturally very talented and very smart, and I just think you've been able to kind of take, do the light touch and get most things done. As I keep saying, minimum effort, maximum effect. But this is, you're getting in the big leagues, pile one, and it's going to be a little bit harder work. And you, but it will bring all your skills. Eight always say to me that you have the skills to do what you need to do. Nine, yeah, and there's something completing, so something new can come in. You're probably going to transform yourself because part of what you're meant to do in Destiny is transform something else in whatever level this is working. And Stellium, there's going to be a con combination of energies that help you do it. So I'm just going to deal out three, three planets, you know, whichever one's come up first, to tell me what those are. It may take a little bit of time to get to them. There's a lot of cards in this deck, as I often say. Eight. 
Uranus, so change, yeah, change is coming in. And you are a change agent. The moon, the psychic knowledge. Read a room, understand the emotional undercurrents and so forth. But also how you're protecting your heart, I think, in all of this. And Neptune, yeah, and the psychic thing again. Wow. Yeah, no wonder, no wonder I feel like you're the magician. That's a very powerful set of planets to have together around change and the numinous and the spiritual. Very, very powerful. Okay, so what we also want to ask of the crone is for a couple of questions using also the stars as well, so different constellations. Questions that could help you go through these processes and step into your destiny. So the first question is from, it doesn't really surprise me with the energy, the, the constellation of Scorpio or Scorpius. The question is, what if the darkest and most mysterious parts of ourselves are also what makes us the most alive? Yeah, you've got to get in touch with your own shadow and know how to manage it and your own strength because you are going to be in these sort of environments and it will be very intoxicating, I think. But knowing your own darkness and your own shadow will be helpful in dealing with it, I think. And then she also is asking from Virgo, the, the constellation of Virgo, what if you were sovereign unto yourself? Yeah, when this comes up and people are trying to beguile you, and they will, pile on, think about, does this keep you sovereign to yourself? Don't sacrifice your own destiny for what appears to be an easier way through because you will, you will, you're Carly, you'll make it through anyway. So make sure that you keep sovereign to yourself. Okay, so to complete the reading, I just want to draw a card from the Mystic Healing Cards because I felt like I would ask the crone at the end to give a healing energy you know, around all of this because I think the crone will always have rather challenging messages. I think it's in the nature, her nature in that way. So just to sort of see what she would suggest around healing when you're going through all of this. Practice positivity, yeah, and that goes right back to the beginning. Because you've got a really, really smart mind and you do understand the dark, like you're, you're not naive, you know, like if you go into this, you're not going to, to be thinking, well, you're, not, you're not Pollyanna, <laughs> but that can work against you as well too. So it's like how to like make the, the, the way that you understand this less painful and there is something about positivity. It's not to be naive, it's not to, to you know, every time you come across one of those sort of like reverse magicians to somehow decide, oh, they must be wonderful, I'm just not seeing them. Well, it's not that. It's not jumping into naivety, but it is being positive, positive about your own strength, your own ability, your capacity to stay sovereign. And then you're going to make this transition really, really well. But it is going to surprise some people in your immediate circle, and some will come with you and some won't, I would say, and I think that's just part of the process. So I hope that that resonates for you, and I hope you enjoyed the readings. It's a bit heavy, but I suspect these crime messages are going to be a bit heavy, uh, but it is it is also wonderful. I think there's wonderful energy that you have here to use. I hope you enjoyed it. I also strongly suggest that you go and see both the uh, the maiden and the mother as well, so that you sort of see what all three of the triptych have to say to you, particularly, as I say, the maiden, but I think the mother will also show you what you can kind of bring into the world and grow in the world and nurture in the world as well too, because I think you come from a very warm place but where you're going isn't that warm I don't think so I think all those energies would be helpful beyond that I hope to see you in future readings welcome pal two to your reader to your reader to your reading you came to the reading with faith and these are three goddesses or archetypes that are partnering with the crone to to let you know what to release what to sustain and what to transform and in partnership here with the faith card, this is a very interesting and I think fairly clear message. This is about this highly spiritual. This is a very much about spiritual magic, really. This is about enacting and building your magic. What this is saying partly here is about getting in touch with faith in what your abilities are and starting to understand them on a deeper level. I think that many of you, since we have the healer here as what is is ready to be released, is that many of you may have come to spirituality or had spiritual concepts around nurturing and healing others. You know, so some of you may have studied Reiki or something like that. You know, but it doesn't have to be literally that, but you have a healing, a medicinal, a nurturing energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Releasing it is not necessarily to let it go completely, but it is not, I think, to limit yourself. 
I think this is partly about your faith and the, the principles and the things that you learn and the things that you practice. And it's also having faith in yourself. It's almost as though if you saw yourself as a healer, even though a healer is a wonderful, wonderful thing, it's that's less than what you can be in total. Because what you're meant to transform here is some of the rituals, practices and celebrations that you, you observe with Petswan Wei. So Petswan Wei is the white buffalo woman from the Sioux tribes and she is about ritual and celebration and so forth. So I feel in combination these two, you, you have had some practices and processes that you have done, probably either literally in healing or in something that has a very healing energy on others. It could be Japanese tea ceremonies. You know, like There's a, just a sort of sense of ceremony and ritual and you're meant to transform that because you're meant to move much more into magic in whatever that means to you with Isis. Isis is one of the most powerful of the pantheon of ancient Egypt and she is transformative in and of herself and she is about bringing magic and power into your life. So this is, this is about the crime wants you to know that you are bigger than you think you are spiritually. And you may have like very, very honorably looked to following the right traditions, healing people, but your magic goes beyond that. And once you actually have some faith in yourself, you're going to see that. So what we're going to do to, to delve into this more is before getting some sort of synchronized or, you know, like consolidated or integrated advice from the crone, we're going to ask each of her helpers here, her collaborators, to tell us a little bit more about what to release, sustain and transform. So firstly, a little bit from the healer here about what it is of your healing ability, whether it's literally in some sort of healing profession or whether it's, it's sort of more that you just naturally have that energy around people. What are you meant to release so that you can, I think, come into your power more? Three of Swords. That's interesting. That fell in exactly that spot with another reading. Some of you might have come to more than one. Ten of Cups reversed. King of Wands reversed. Okay, I'm going to put down all three for each and then we'll talk about it. Then in terms of what needs to be sustained, or sustained, consolidated, built on more. With Isis, we have Ace of Swords reversed. Four of Swords reversed. The Hierophant, <laughs> yeah, okay. And then with what needs to be transformed, which I think has more to do with what you, your rituals, your practices are, what you, what you do, what else can be brought to the table. We have Eight of Wands reversed, Death, re oh, not, not reversed, just Death, and the Mother reversed, okay. So for a start, I think the mother coming up as an energy there would say there's a lot about the transformative energy that, that you will probably get if you go to the mother of the three in this reading. I think it's a particular sign. I mean, I would encourage you to go to both, but I think that there's something there around what to transform as well. Okay, so healing. You have healed many, I think, as a way to potentially heal yourself or through very, very deep empathy. You have very, very deep empathy. Like you can feel into the pain of others and the loss of others at a level that is almost off the charts. And you naturally do it. So you're, you're probably a true empath. You know, there's a lot of people who are empathic and then there are true empaths. I think you're a true empath. But what has happened is I think that has drained your energy quite a bit with the King of Wands reversed. And you may also have been hurt by people who have wanted to control you, have seen you as being not a soft touch in, in the sense of being you know, naive or anything, but that you are so giving that it would, it's easy to exploit. So I think the healer wants you to, in the process of healing yourself and coming into your magic, dial back on the empathy just a bit. You don't have to lose the, the, the healing abilities, but it's, it's like understanding how they may have been exploited and how you feel into other pain, it, 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 it is actually sapping some of your energy. Yeah, and it's making you question yourself. I mean, this is all about having faith in yourself and faith in your abilities. So you're very, very good at it, but you could even be in a situation where you are, but somebody won't admit it. That's a possibility as well too, because they want to control you. They want you to feel destabilized. It could be another person who, who's a quote unquote healer who isn't as good as you. It could be competitive on that level, or it could be just a dominating energy. But, but 
that that's why you need to dial back a bit. It's just that it's either draining you or it's bringing you into competition that's not that's diverting you from what you could really consolidate. And I want to look at transform before I go to consolidate because I think this is the this is the destination really for you. Transforming over here with the eight of wands reversed, you've held yourself back. You really have. It's it's like you've studied certain things. As I say, you might have studied Reiki or something like that, and you think, okay, now I've learned that. But the reality is, you'll be given that in terms of what you can do, and and so. The, the ceremonies in their own ways have restricted you rather than, than letting you make the choices and the change and the transformation that you could make. And this may have been something that you learnt from a parental figure, particularly the mother, or it may be that it's been the thing that stopped you nurturing yourself. The other thing yeah. about Petsuan We is that it is, it is um, she is a peacemaker. So I think that there may be also part of your healing might have been bringing peace. But again, in doing so, you may have denied yourself. You may compromise a bit too much. And it's, you know, it's a lovely thing, again, that somebody does that. You're a lovely person. But I think that this is like there is a need to transform your reliance on the protocols of something so that you can really start to open up your actual ability, which then takes us to ISIS. So excuse me, I just paused there. You may not have realized, but it was just somebody had messaged me on Skype. So I just wanted to let them know I'm doing a reading. Okay, so this is this is the main game, I think, what you're meant to consolidate and grow with ISIS. And this is this is really where the power is. You are, this is this is confirming. There is a lot of magic, a lot of power in you. And interestingly, what? it is it is something which you can find the right spiritual practice for this is this is telling me it's a higher order spiritual practice than maybe what you've been doing if you think about it. like if you think of like you know kind of healing and then you, know, you move to sort of like you know something like high magic or something like that there's various different things there's something with hierophant where there is knowledge You're, you naturally like knowledge and so you can actually work with that but this is to unlock you and bring you out and unlock a natural sort of telepathic downloading sort of sense that you have and a connection to the divine because in a way by sticking to just the protocols of these things that maybe have have lessened you and focusing so much on the empathy of others you've you kind of denied some of your own direct connection to the divine but there is some form of practice that you can do it's just i suspect it's it's more esoteric and it's more detailed but i do think you're the sort of person who could do something with that so i think that's why why the crone wants you to sort of like realize how much more that you could do so much more if you sort of like kind of like get a bit more aspirational about how high you would like to go and if you are already studying something like magic this is saying you're meant to get right to the top level you're not meant to just kind of be at the adept level so there's just something here about opening up your faith in yourself and your own power Okay, so let's see what the Chrome wants to say, having sort of heard from each of her, her collaborators here. So we want to sort of see, you know, what, how would she sort of synthesize this? What's the real message that she's trying to bring to you? Justice. The High Priestess. Wow. Six of Wands. Temperance reversed. Okay. She's saying that there's something bigger than you that you're meant to do with this, with justice. So there's something about you learning more of that. It's, it's not, it's not just kind of healing people. There's a bigger, there's a bigger canvas that you're supposed to be working on. This is what this is saying. And you are very, very psychic, very dialed in. That's what it's saying. You will get recognition for this in some way. As, as I say, whether it's literally that you're getting sort of like one of the mystery traditions, you move up the ladder pretty quickly, or whether people just start to recognize that you're working at a whole other level whatever it might be, because it depends on whether this is very overt and in a spiritual way or whether it's a spiritual undercurrent to what you do in something more conventional. But either way, you're going to get recognition for this and you are meant to bring balance back to something because there's something, once you start moving in the circles or moving into what you're meant to be doing, there's an imbalance that you're meant to be helping to deal with and you can't just do it on this sort of, this feels like you do it very much individually. Yeah, you know, like so if you were a reader like this, you individually read, but there's sort of something as a bigger platform. Or there's people who are more influential and further up the line you're meant to read for, or something like that. There's something like that going on. So let's ask for three cards for her advice to you. 
She just wants you to know you could be so much more. And you could really be seen for this, not to be shy about it. So we have Knight of Cups reversed. King of Cups. King of Pentacles. Wow, okay. So she's also saying that your heart may be one of your Achilles heels. You are so caring. And it may also be that you, if there was to be people who would compete or would like lessen what you were doing, it could be people who come through with false sort of love or false caring. You might attract narcissists, actually, I think, to some degree. So that's, that's the sort of energy to be aware of. But she's saying you're more than a match for it. You've just got to know that you're more than a match for it. Like if the Knight of Cups reverse is coming to you, someone with sort of false promises or trying to beguile you or trying to get you to look after all their emotional stuff so they don't have to look after it, you can reflect back with the King of Cups and say, heal yourself in a sense, you know, like give you, here's the tools, you go and do it so that you don't get caught up in that. You're meant to establish this materially and, you know, very likely meant to make money out of it as well. But, you know, you're, you're at another level, <laughs> but you haven't seen this in yourself. And, it's, and it is about magic. It is about spiritual practice. There's something about that. But as I say, you don't necessarily have to you know, have a spiritual job. It's, it's just like if you didn't, then there's something about your magic that takes you very high in what you do, for instance. Or if you're creative, there's something about your magic that really brings a resonance and brings success to you. But you've got to understand it. You're seeing yourself too small. Okay. So one of the things that can sometimes make us see ourselves too small is the shadows, you know, that we are dealing with. So I wanted to ask the crone about your shadows that you need to be aware of. So we're using a couple of decks to do that. So first one, burnt by the sun, ambition, extension, reach. Okay, I think you don't trust ambition. I mean, this card often is where someone is overly ambitious and they get kind of, it's almost like on your way, they get kind of like, Oh, you know, <laughs> um, it's all too much and like who cares anymore sort of thing. But I don't think that's the case for you. I think it's that you think there's something about ambition that is a negative. And you're meant to be more ambitious than you are because you've got something of real worth to bring out. So don't, don't equate it with that. You've probably seen that. You've probably seen ambitious, powerful people who are kind of a bit emotionally bankrupt. But that's not who you are. But I think you fear it a bit. So just be aware that you might repress yourself a bit for that reason and the lantern fairy a clear solution so this is actually not so much a shadow but i think it says that, 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 that this is just saying there is a clarity to this you know like you you learn and you follow rituals and everything you find the right ones it's going to be very clear you'll find your way through this and you'll start to see i think when you do it that this doesn't create this in you that that's not an inevitable outcome Okay, so let's get some spiritual lanterns for you, really. So we'll start firstly with the, the uh, Path of the Illuminated Soul energy. Oops, I just dropped a whole bunch of those cards. I'm sure they're not the ones that we want, so let's see what we get. Okay, Stagnation, the Bread Oven. This is, this is a call to arms for you. This is to get you to really start thinking about moving out of this. You've got to release this energy. It says, the dial stays stuck. Things no longer move. Time to turn up the heat. You do need to do this, Pile 2. You, know, you don't want to keep yourself stuck. Don't sacrifice yourself because you think that having ambition is something that sort of is somehow lesser spiritually. That's not true. Let's see the alchemical energy around your transformation. Summer. Okay. It's the time of the harvest. It's the time of embodying. It's a time of enjoying. You're meant to enjoy this a bit more. It's all very earnest over here. And as I say, I do think with the mother reverse, here, you might have been like taught all sorts of principles about, you know, you know like it should be about self-sacrifice and you should be there to heal everybody else. You might have been, you know, in your family told, you know, consider all of us, you know, and that was kind of code for not being considered yourself. Like there's there's programming here to, to break and to alchemically transform and use whatever rituals that you are transforming to enjoy it and to celebrate it. There's nothing wrong with what you've done. It's just that there's the next step to go to. Let's see the archetypal energy around it for you. The gem. Well, there you go. That's really the source of, of what 
this is trying to say. There's a, you're at like a diamond in the rough, you know. You are you are already naturally talented, but the true gemstone, the true power of you, the true glory of you is yet to be mined and seen and, and refined and developed. This is this is just, you know, understand that. You know, you're not meant to be buried away and not seen. Your beauty and your energy is meant to come up. And there's nothing wrong with it. You don't end up like some egotist if that's what you're worried about. Okay, let's get you some astrology and numerology support as well, pile two. Mercury. Communication is going to help you. Also that mercurial energy. You Very quick mind. You'll pick this sort of stuff up very quickly as you sort of like go up the ladder. And the chances are, spiritually, if you are looking into some sort of system, you'll probably have remembered it from a past life, to be frank. 10th house, yeah, it's going to be something, you're meant to be seen for this, you know, it's in your career in some way or in your personal brands, so it doesn't have to be avert, though some of you may well be known for spiritual matters, and square, so there's, there's a tension, there's a tension because I think you have got this programming that told you to sort of like keep yourself small and think about others all the time, and you're actually meant, you're ultimately be able to do more for others once you really take on your true potential let's just see what planets there are so I'll just deal out till I get them Jupiter yeah expansion you're meant to expand Jupiter is also you know like higher learning all those sort of things Uranus yeah to be you know to change you can bring change and transformation into your life by expanding your horizons very ninth house feeling actually so there's 10th house in what you do for your career, but there's like a lot of learning around this. It expands your horizons or travel, anything to do with 9th house type things. We also want to ask the crone to use the constellations to give us two questions that could be helpful for you to ask. So firstly, we have Libra. What if you honoured that some things are outside of your control? Yeah, you can't heal everybody and you can't deal with you know people whose ambitions are warped you can't do any of those things all you can do is work on yourself okay and then the second question centaurus what have you spent your life as something that will outlast it yeah yeah, because that's the thing. I feel like if you get into the, the level of this in whatever it is and you kind of bring it very much into the world, it's like a legacy is created as well too. You just, you're just you just seeing yourself too small. That's all it is. That's all it is. And once you start to realize that, you know, the, the world is your oyster. So to finish off, I wanted to get a healing card because I felt that the energy or the messages from the crone, just because of her nature, because I think she, she tells it like it is and you know, it's not always necessarily the easiest message, but it's an important message. I thought a healing card from her, a healing energy would be helpful to close out the reading. So for you, we have contemplate death and beyond. Okay. This is about what's going to outlast it. I think it's, I think it's got a double message for you. I think it's like, don't waste your time. Like, I really think it's saying like, you know, life is precious You've got so much that you can do. You know, you, you really are meant to transform and move beyond the niceties into the profundity. And if you think about death and beyond, that's a very profound thing to understand, your place in the cosmos and your incarnation this time. You will no doubt have other incarnations here or somewhere else, all of those sort of things. But this is your moment, Pole 2. And the healing is to understand that, understand how profound this could be. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And do go and see Rena and Ember's readings for this because I think it's really important if you're looking at rounding out this full sense of self and really owning who you are, it's important to also see what the maiden and the mother have to, to advise you as well. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, part three, to your reading. So you've come to the reading with perception as the sort of like the guiding sort of energy of this. And then there are three goddesses here that are partnering with the crone to bring a message to you about what to release, what to sustain, and what to transform. And I think it kind of in this goes from release, transform, to sustain because of the nature of this. I think the message of this is pretty clear. With perception, it's all about how you perceive things and that how much you can create something from your perceptions and so forth. And this is not the sort of like more 
basic sort of magical thinking type of thing. It's much more about understanding what you're in, what is working, what isn't working, and and how to actually move towards the positive and understanding that that therefore then helps to co-create what you do. It's not just as simple as thinking positive. It's it's actually doing the work. And I think this is what this is talking about. With Ixchel, she is a goddess of the moon, of water, of rivers, of, you know, of diversity, all sorts of things. What I think this is about is releasing. She comes to release stagnant energy. She comes to release emotional patterns and when things haven't gone right. So I think if you've come to the right reading, you'll recognize this. There's something recently probably, whether it's a relationship, career, creatively, whatever it might be, spiritually, that hasn't really gone the way that you would have wanted it to go. Something didn't quite work out. This this energy is to release what the disappointment of that and to understand that you know tomorrow's another day sort of thing there is there is something to come in which we get to hear but this is about releasing old hurts and so forth then we move to transformation because i feel like it's saying there is a certain amount that emotionally you can wash away at this point in time and you'll probably know what that is and to let that go even if it's you know you just sit down and you have a good cry you know like there's nothing wrong with that you know or you go to the spa and you get pampered to release that energy and so forth you know, or you, you sort of dance or you, you sing or do whatever it is that releases sort of emotional energy. That's what Ixchel is asking you to do. But there will be some still left because whatever this is is a bit profound. Then we get to Pele, who's the goddess of volcanoes, amongst other things. So there is that sense of like really shifting that which needs to shift and burning out that which needs to burn out. And what she's saying to you in terms of transformation is to burn out whatever has not been able to be washed away and then think outside the box, do something different. Be a bit outrageous, you know. So if if you had, for instance, an emotional thing that occurred because you did sort of everything right and you were really polite, but at the end of the day, still somebody else, you know, got the glittering prizes or whatever it was, then this is like, you know what, I'm going to burn all of that out and then I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, I'm going to I'm going to be a bit outrageous. I'm going to think outside the box. I'm going to bring in the new. I'm going to see this as an opportunity to really reform who I am so that I don't have to feel that again. So this is sort of like the... The wash away the first bit, the burn away the rest. It feels very sort of alchemical. And then it's the create, cleanse and create because your moja helps you to cleanse energies. So what's left is cleansed and made perfect and polished and you're able to then create from that and sustain something of beauty that you want. So it almost feels like, actually what it almost feels like is like polishing a gem because you sort of start with a sort of almost uncut gem and you sort of wash it away and you look at what it is and then you sort of like almost sandblast it and, and scrub it or whatever to bring out the shine and then it's cleansed properly and the energy really comes out so but it's all about your perception so this is saying this is all completely in your power if you felt that you were overpowered or something didn't work out you now have the power to wash away the unhappiness to decide what that means in terms of who you want to be going forward and to cleanse and to purify that so that it's very strong, very stable, very healthy. Okay, so let's get some information from each of these collaborators with the crone. So we're just going to get three cards for each about a bit more about what to release, what to transform and what to sustain. But I'll go in that order when I lay it out. And... Then we'll get what the crone wants to say in, in sort of as a sort of a summary of this and, and really distilling it for you. So firstly, what Ixchel wants to say about releasing this energy, releasing the disappointments, releasing any pain that's associated with all of this. We have the tribulation reversed. We have the hanged man. And we have judgment reversed. Okay. Then in terms of your mojo here, in, in terms of what you can you know, cleanse and, and purify and sort of bring forward, you know, what's beauty. We have the Knight of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands reversed, and the World, okay. And then for Pele, which is a little bit more, after the sort of like the gentle cleansing, then we have the dramatic sandblasting, basically. What does Pele want you to, to sort of like bring forward, like, you know, in terms of who you are and establishing your own power? Hierophant reversed. No, King of Pentacles reversed. Eight of Wands. Okay, all right. 
So starting over here with what to release, I mean, it's interesting we have the tribulation reversed. It, it, and this has been significant, whatever this is. It could be heartbreak. It could be a really big disappointment around a job or a career or something creative. It's it's big. And and really, Xchell is saying that she understands and the crone is saying they understand. But you have to kind of like cease to give it the power that it's been given. Because, you know, when you have tribulation, even if it's reversed, it's sort of like this sort of sense of like the wailing and gnashing of teeth. That energy is starting to be spent. You maybe have hung on to it too, for too long. It's almost like if I have nothing else, I have the misery. And and Ixchel saying, no, that's that's actually corrosive for you. Something happened that was not fair, but you're avoiding making the decision to move out of this energy. So this is the first thing you need to do. It is about your perception. You're not wrong that something happened that was probably not fair. But on the other hand, you're now choosing with your perception to stay in the tribulation and you're kind of stubborn about it. It's almost like you feel staying in there with the hangman, you're doing a sacrifice that warns you from it happening again. But the crone and, and her goddess friends here are saying, no, that's not what will work. The thing that will actually stop this from recurring is washing away this stuff, sandblasting it out and deciding who you want to be and then cleansing and going forward with your power. That's what they're trying to say to you. Now, over here... Pele, who's a little bit more dramatic, says that the, the old way of doing things and the structures that you were caught in, they are no longer going to be suitable for you. This could very well be either around a relationship with someone who has sort of king of pentacles energy. It doesn't have to be male. This is not about gender. But it's someone who was not reliable, not sort of someone who was constant. So she definitely says, get that person out if that's the case. And if this is around work and so forth, where there's sort of something that's very unstable, this, she wants you to find the freedom to move into something that's going to be a better fit for you. Now, of course, whenever you talk about work, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can just get up and, and you know walk out tomorrow. You need to sort of find something. But she wants you to be thinking about that. It's it, There's something in this where, as I say, you've either thought it was your fault and it actually isn't, or you've thought that somehow by taking this this and, and enduring it, you're, you're proving some sort of strength. And Pelly's saying, no, no, you know, like your strength is in freedom. Your strength is in, as I say, sandblasting the energy and, and finding your freedom. And then that allows you down here to find to what you would, would want to commit to and what has a really true connection to your soul journey and so forth. And it can reawaken your passion because it's almost like sitting in this energy You've kind of dulled your own passion, you've dulled your own ambition, you've dulled your own desire. So the only way that you can like even start to reawaken that is is to sort of go through the process of clearing it all out and, and saying, you know, I'm going to find the thing that I could really be committed to long term. And that, you know, if it's a relationship, the soul twin, as opposed to sort of something that might be a, have been false. So there's just, it's just saying this is what you have to do. You, you cannot hold on to this. There is no guarantee. In fact, the only guarantee really in staying in the energy of the tribulation with perception is, in fact, creating it again, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But, in fact, taking your power, and as I say, I keep thinking sandblasting it out and, and, and finding the freedom to be who you want to be is the thing that helps you find the thing you could truly commit to and which would be committed to you. Okay, so let's see what the crone wants to say overall about this, having heard from her three friends. Queen of Cups reversed, Eight of Cups, the Hermit, the Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so she's saying, yeah, you've suppressed your own emotions in this. It's like it's like you bargained in a way, but she's saying that bargain doesn't work. You just have to move away. You have to do this. This is the most important part of it, actually. Pelly is the most dramatic, but the most important part is allowing yourself to wash away most of the pain so that you can actually even start to think about what freedom would look like and then what you would want to commit to and grow over time. So she's saying that like while you suppress your own emotions, you stay stuck. But if you can actually come into letting that go, then, then you will be able to move through this. And she's saying it's okay to do it on your own. You don't have to sort of publicly show this, you know. There doesn't have to be anything like that. But this will actually put a seed in the ground for what you want to do, for what you want to become. And it, and it will start to grow. It will grow very quickly, actually. Like from the ace to the night, very quickly. The world energy there. There is a spiritual aspect to this. This is your perception is powerful, but you can do it very privately. This is not something you have to show to the world, but it's got it's something you've got to do internally. You've got to own it for yourself. 
Okay, let's see what three pieces of advice she can give to, to help you do that. Three of Wands. Seven of Swords reversed. Strength. Okay. She is saying, while a lot of this you do privately and personally, there will be good friends around you. So don't don't lose that. You have some good friends and you don't have to necessarily do it all on your own. It doesn't, as I say, have to be out on the public stage. But there are people that, that are with you and there are people who, when you start to move forward, will want to move forward with you. There is a sense here of kind of just stripping away all the excuses that you might have or anybody else might have had about this. If someone did you wrong and they're full of excuses, just don't listen to it anymore. Just just like basically wash it away, sandblast it out and move on to what you want. That's where your strength is. And if you have been telling yourself all sort of stories that stay in this, you need to let that go as well too to reclaim your strength. This is all about your perception. What is honest, what is true within yourself, what you accept or don't accept from others. There will be good people around you and you have a strength. You have the strength to do this. You just have to know it and believe it. Okay, so this, this I did think, and it's the way it's been going, it's some fairly heavy messages coming from the crane because the crane energy is a bit like that. It's, it is sort of like kind of the, the wisdom that, that comes with sometimes pain and, and age and so forth. So I wanted to get a couple of cards to look at shadow energy you need to be aware of. The last day in the light, unexpected ending, surprise changes, sudden shifts. Okay, so this is from the vampire's oracle. So this is kind of the concept of sort of someone who's been bitten by a vampire and they're not going to be able to be in the light anymore. So they, they're having to give up something. I think this could be working on a dual level for you. I think part of it may, there might have been a shock associated with this and a significant loss i don't know what it was because it'll be different for different people a akin to if you were bit by a vampire and then you couldn't see the sun again so this is this sort of sense you know and even the rain and the moon it's it's that you have been in a difficult place there is no doubt about it but there is an adjustment then that one would go through so I think that's the case. But I think it's also that, you know, you could get caught in almost the romance of the pain because there is something kind of like dread and romantic about vampire stories. You know, they're, they're very powerful and seductive in their own way. But they are still also a story that's about kind of addiction and renunciation. And, and neither of those things are really that helpful. So don't get addicted to the renunciation. This is not your last day in the light. You can move forward. Oh, three. And then another shadow energy. The storm angel. Collision of belief, styles, attitudes, and energy. Yeah, it's like it's all about belief. It's about what you believe. But I don't think the crone's going to let you sit in this space. And I don't think that the goddesses that are helping are going to either. You're going to be facing this and you need to face it because there's so much that you can bring out. And in doing it, you probably will help other people eventually because I think there's something kind of you know, kind of like a prototype of what you've gone through, that, that you being able to do this would be a very good example for others. But yeah, you, you can't you can't hide away from this anymore. This is this is now necessary. It's it's very key for your health and happiness. And and you know you're even going to potentially some of you will have friends I'm getting who are just going to say, no, you can't stay home and be unhappy anymore. You're coming out or whatever it is. There's a sort of like you're coming to an inevitable collision with with being stuck so that you come out of that energy. Okay, so let's have a look at some guidance for you. So firstly, a card from the Path of the Illuminated Soul. I mean, I think the message here is actually quite beautiful about how you can become so much happier and so much more aware of how powerful your own beliefs are. But, but there is, I, whatever it is, it was painful. And I, and I do feel for you on that. I do empathize. So the energy from the Path of the Illuminated Soul journey the pocket watch it says take a journey into the unknown where time has no place yeah don't dwell in the past anymore pile three there are many wonderful things in terms of redetermining yourself and, and cleansing your energy to become really what you want and to bring joy back but you have to take the journey to do it let's see the alchemy energy that's around you you know and some of this i'm just getting could be grief as well you could have lost someone like you know but at some point you have to come out of the grieving process if that's the case. That's not dishonouring them if that's the case. That's just, you know, the living have to continue the living. They're living. 
Okay, alchemically. Coagulation. Now well, that's interesting. I think that's very much picking up what the Crohn's talking about with the Ace of Pentacles because this is when all the constituent elements that you've gone through come together into something new. Now, it could be coming together into a significant relationship that can be represented in coagulation because it's close to the alchemical wedding. That's possible. So if you're coming out of a relationship, it might be to bring a new one in. If it's not about relationship, it's just, it's it's a force. It has to happen. Like you, this is why you can't stay here. You have to kind of clear this out because something new is trying to come through and the coagulation brings that together. It's it's like sort of like iron filings to a magnet. You have to, you have to let this energy come through. Let's see the archetype energy that's operating for you. Gnosis. Knowledge, wisdom. Yeah, after this, there is wisdom. You know, it's very interesting, I have to say, because Gnosis, to me, it connects to the Kabbalah. It connects to to uh, particularly Binar. It connects to Sophia wisdom in the Gnostic tradition. They all kind of connect in my head. And I feel like there is something here about, because Binar in in the Kabbalah is, is called the Great Mother. So again, it's pointing to mother energy, I think. It's important to, to, to connect to the mother reading in this in this triptych. But Bina is a combination of wisdom and compassion. And Bina sits on the pillar of severity. And the reason, you know, you would think that almost sounds counterintuitive. Why would compassion be sitting on severity? But what it is saying is that in a way... Hokmah, which is the father that comes before in the sort of order of the Sephiroth, is undifferentiated wisdom. It doesn't have the compassion. The compassion comes from understanding the pain. So the severity of life, you know, the 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 that energy is there, and this is what you've you've gone through. You you understand there is a knowledge that you've had from this of going through whatever this pain was, which I think is significant. But it's made you incredibly wise and incredibly empathic. And this is why there's something beautiful that can be born. But you have to come out of the pain, you know. You have to be kind to yourself in the way that you would be kind to others, pile through. I'm feeling this really strongly. I'm feeling quite emotional because I, I feel like there's something incredibly beautiful that could be born from this. But it it's, comes from pain. I can, like, feel the pain. But let the pain go. Let it wash away. This is what all these goddesses and the crone are here to help you do, to, to really bring you into this beautiful wisdom, this beautiful knowledge that, that is only from pain, I think. You know, but, but it, is, it is nevertheless precious. Okay. So let's see what the stars or numerology can, can do to help light your way. Libra, getting things in balance, and your mind, getting your mind to work for you, rather than your perceptions to work for you and be in a balanced way. And fair, you're a very fair person. And what's happened to you is very unfair, I think, whatever it is. Venus, very strong feminine energy, a very strong connection, as I say, to Sophia, to Binar, to all of that, but also love. This is about love in some way, self-love, love of others, lost love and new love coming in. There's something to do with love. Even if this is around career, it's got something, a career, a job that was loved, there's love associated with this energy. Feminine. Oh, yeah, wow. I would actually say to you, I mean, I would encourage everybody who comes to these to watch all of the, all of the readings, but I would say particularly for you. I think you're very strongly connected to the Divine Feminine. So Mother, Maiden, and Crone, all of them, you, you really should. They're all going to connect somehow. Um, and I would encourage pretty much anybody to do that, but particularly this group, because I feel like you're very dialed into that. And Sextile, ultimately, this will be easier than you expect. We'll have a look at the planets involved so that we can sort of see what planetary energies are perhaps helping you and supporting each other in, in taking you through this process. And I'm glad to see that because I think you've been through enough, quite frankly, Paul Three. So I'm just going to dial out, not dial out, deal out until I get two planets.
Mercury. So how you communicate, how you think. These are all about how you think, your perception, what you hear and learn from others, what you say to others. And moon, yeah, and the psychic. So both the intellect and the psychic emotional energy together, you know, they will work together well to help you go through this process. Okay, also to potentially help you go through the process, I wanted to ask the crone for a couple of constellations with questions from the stories oracle for questions that might help you to contemplate in this energy. So firstly, you have cancer. What would you do for those you care for? Okay, so there may be for some of you that whatever this pain is, you've almost withdrawn from those you care for. There's good friends, good companions, family, whatever it might be. But I think it's also you need to look after yourself and move out of this so that you can move forward and help others because I think you're a very caring person. And so if you won't do it for anybody else, basically is what I'm saying, if you, sorry, if you won't do it for yourself, do it for other people. <laughs> like if you won't do it for yourself. Because I think you, you you almost maybe would think that was self-indulgent, but it's not. You have a lot of love and care to give, I think, Pile 3. And then we also have Canis Major. What if you released your plans? Yeah. What if, what if you started to think about what you want to do next? You know, not kind of like what's been in the past, but sort of move into the unknown and start to sort of share that with people and find the people who are going to be with you and commit to that with you. So that's really powerful. Okay, so the last card I wanted to use in this reading was actually from the Mystic Healing um, reading cards. Because I felt these, these, and it has turned out to be the case, that any messages from the crane are likely to be a little bit, a little bit challenging, but nevertheless very healing. So I thought ending on whatever healing energy she would say would be worth focusing on would be a good, good way to close out the reading. So for you, we have assimilate life experience. Okay. So this is, I think in a way she's saying this is a life experience you went through. And it's in a weird way by letting go of the emotion, by clearing out that which is no longer going to work for you and then moving forward to what is a cleansed, you know, supported, nourished person. You assimilate that life experience. You're never going to lose it. You're never going to forget the wisdom that you've got. You're going to keep with you, but you need to see it as just a life experience. It does not define you. It is part of the thing that helped refine you into being the you know, wise person caring being that you are and the even wiser and even care more caring being that you have every potential to be but that's the thing this is just a life experience no matter how it felt let it go clear it out and then find how you want to move forward so i hope that that resonates for you i hope that it was helpful i do feel for you in this but i do see enormous potential for you as well i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear about it Beyond that, please do, you in particular, do go and see both the other readings, Rena's and uh, Ember's, because I really think there's something about the Divine Feminine with you. So it's a very important, I would say the Mother Maiden and Crone is a very important trinity for you. Uh, so definitely do that, I would say. And I hope you enjoy that. And beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings.